All right, so we're going to go back to this sheet where we had graphed sine of x on one side and y equals cosine of x on the other side. And we're going to use the reciprocals to graph um, cosecant and secant. Now, um, I would recommend that you use a different color pencil or pen. Um, so if you have color pencils, that'd be fine. If you have pens, that's fine. Just be careful because you obviously can't erase a pen. Um, so the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. So I'm going to use pink to um, graph reciprocals. And this, um, the first thing I'm going to do is look at the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are where the sine is equal to zero. And I know that the reciprocal of zero is undefined. So that means that I'm going to have vertical asymptotes everywhere the sine has an x-intercept because the cosecant would be undefined there and pink is the graph of the cosecant. All right, then I'm going to go to each point, and in pink, I'm going to graph the reciprocal of that point. So I'm going to start with pi over 6. Um, when I did the sine of pi over 6, I got 1 half. The reciprocal of that is 2. All right, then for pi over 4, I got the square root of 2 over 2. The reciprocal of that is the square root of 2. Right? And then for pi over 3, I got um, the square root of 3 over 2. The reciprocal of that is 2 square root of 3 over 3. Right? And then at pi over 2, um, I got 1. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. So the two graphs touch right there. All right, and then I'll just keep doing reciprocals. All right, and so what it forms is a little parabola opening upward. All right, so you pause the video. Um, go ahead and do reciprocals on um, um, reciprocals for all the rest of the points on sign, and then do um, asymptotes and reciprocals on cosine. And then when you're done, um, play the video and check your answers with mine. <clears throat> okay. So this is what your sine and cosecant graph should look like. And then um, the period of cosecant will match the period of the sine. But if you notice, the amplitude is none because the amplitude is the distance between the middle and the highest point. But because um, I have these little parabolas that keep going up, 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 and keep going down, 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 there isn't a highest point. So the cosecant and the secant both do not have an amplitude. There is none on those. So that's um, cosecant, and then here is secant. And then same thing, the period matches the period of cosine, and then the amplitude is none because it just keeps going up, up, up. So pause the video if you need to check a little closer. All right, so, um, oh, let's go to this key characteristics. All right, um, so the period is going to be the same as it was for sine and cosine. So that's going to be 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. And then the amplitude is none. And even though we're not talking about tangent and cotangent, their amplitude is also none. Because they're going to keep going up, 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 and keep going down, down, down. All right. So whenever we're graphing cosecant, we're going to graph sine first. Right? Wherever we have x-intercepts, the graph of cosecant will be undefined. So we would draw vertical asymptotes there. And then you're going to um, draw little parabolas. 
touching the peaks and valleys of your sign or the maximum and minimum um, and it they fall in between the asymptotes And then when we do secant, it's going to be the same, but instead we'll start off with cosine. All right, so we're going to do one and two on this, and then tomorrow or the next day we'll do um, three and four. So we're going to find the period and the phase shift, and then we'll graph two periods. Now there is no amplitude for secant. All right. So period, we would do 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which is 1, so that would be period of 2 pi. And this one does have a phase shift. This one is going to shift pi over 2 to the right. Okay, now I'm going to come down and um, write information for cosine, because first, we're going to graph 2 cosine of x minus pi over 2. And so it has the same phase shift and the same period as what we wrote for secant. So the phase shift was pi over 2 to the right, which is going to make this one start at pi over 2. And then we're going to end, we would take that pi over 2 and add the period to it. So we're going to end at 5 pi over 2 on our first period. Okay, so we'll start off and draw a long x-axis. In the middle of it, we'll put the starting point of our period. And then at the end, we'll put the ending point. All right, then we need to find our halfways. So we would add those together, and we would get 6 pi over 2, or 3 pi, and divide that by 2, which is 3 pi over 2. All right, then we would add those together, and we would get 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi, and we divide that by 2 is pi. One's too high. All right, I'm going to go ahead and find my other ending point. So we're going to do pi over 2 minus the period. All right, now if we add negative 3 pi over 2 and 1 pi over 2, we're going to get negative 2 pi over 2, or negative pi, and then divide that by 2. Right, halfway between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is 0, which is going to be where the y-axis is. And then halfway between those is going to be negative pi. <clears throat> now, even though secant doesn't have an amplitude, cosine does. And so we would put the amplitude of the cosine um, on your y-axis. Now, whenever we're graphing cosine, remember you start up at a max, and then an x-intercept, and then a min, and then an x-intercept, and then a max, and then an x-intercept, and then a min, x-intercept, max. All right. And then I'm going to do just a, a dashed cosine curve. Because this isn't really the, we haven't even graphed a single thing for secant yet. All of this has been for cosine. All right, and then everywhere where we have an x-intercept, we're going to draw a vertical asymptote. That's where our, cosec our secant sorry, is undefined. All right, and then we're ready to graph secant, which is going to be these little parabolas that touch the um, cosine curve and fall in between your asymptotes. All right, so that's how you graph secant.
Okay, so we're going to do cosecant next. Um, so we'll go ahead and give the period. So the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 2, or pi. And this one does have a phase shift. We would do pi over 2, so we do this divided by this. And then since that's positive, it's going to be to the left. First, we are going to graph y equals sine of 2x plus pi, which is going to have the same period and the same phase shift. So since we shifted pi over 2 to the left, my start is going to be negative pi over 2. And then to find the end, I'm going to add the period to that. So I'm going to end at pi over 2. So I'll put my starting point in the middle, my ending point at the end, and then I'll start finding halfway. So halfway between those is zero, so that's the y-axis. Right, and I know that's one-fourth, and it's negative one-fourth. All right, and then my other ending, we're going to do that negative pi over 2 and subtract the period. And then halfway between those, if I added them together, I would get negative 4 pi over 2 or negative 2 pi. And then divide that by 2 is negative pi. All right. And then negative 3 pi over 4 and negative 5 pi over 4. All right. Now, I do need to put the amplitude of my sine on my y-axis. And then sine starts at the middle, and then a max, middle, min, and just keep repeating that pattern. Okay. And everywhere we, re we have an x-intercept, we are going to draw our vertical asymptote. So again, we haven't graphed a single point. Well, no, we have a couple points, but we've really just focused on sine, and then we're focusing on where cosecant is undefined right now. Okay, and then now we're ready to graph our cosecant where we will draw parabolas just touching at the maximum and minimum and falling in between the asymptotes. There we go. All right, so you guys have a short assignment. Today is just two problems on two, page 317, do number 22 and 35. And then tomorrow we'll finish up all the different types of crafting.